that share note, the lady and yeah. the gentleman, let's bring in our drone again. Yeah. Now, this is how it looks. Beautifully coming into the studio with uh, another garage of toy cars. And they are going to show us the halfway mark on this lovely table where the guests say, Ki, yaar, hume ignore karta. there it goes. It lands on you and as we come in closer, it's opening up. And this is the state of Madhya Pradesh. It's the state of Madhya Pradesh where the Congress is trailing and the BJP is racing away to a historic number. Atara saal baad, what happened in Gujarat? A number which is a pratyashit. A similar story that is happening in Madhya Pradesh. A number which is a pratyashit. Never before that has happened. And they have crossed the 150 number. In Gujarat, they crossed that 150 number. They thought never before it will be possible. They have made history there with 156. Here again, they have done that number with 152 lead so far. Right here, next to Rahul Shivshankar comes the BJP car. There it is. And now we are going to roll them back, send them back and swing the conversation towards what has happened? Which note, which other M are you adding here, Mr. Rahul Shashankar? Look, I... To, or I, which is the, the biggest... The is going I, over your notes, man. I have... I have <laughs> Take it away. The, the, exactly. And I'll just tell you one thing. That even in the piece that I wrote yesterday, I talked about the Modi factor. Mm. You can't discount this. Yes, Mr. Shivraj Singh, but remember he lost the last election. If you really look at that, he lost the last election. Mm. He needed that X factor. That X factor was Mr. Modi. Unusual mm. for the BJP and for Mr. Modi himself to pitch himself so aggressively in a state election in both Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh and you can look at that. Now, is it also that three states they cannot compromise on? Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra. Because they are also the uh, RSS and of course the Modi, Amit Shah yeah. hotbeds or hot hubs. You, know, or I, I was, uh, no, you yeah. asked about the OBCs yeah. and this whole caste census business, right? OBC dominated seats in Madhya Pradesh. 54 of them, the BJP is leading in 40, there Congress only in 14. Hmm. Now compare this to 2018, where OBC dominance was not talked about, caste census was not talked about, the Congress had more than the BJP. It had six seats more, 34, and the BJP only 29. This time the BJP is running away with those seats in the OBC-dominated segments of Madhya Pradesh. And Madhya Pradesh is that kind of a state, 50% plus population is OBC, a lot of seats in Gwalior Chambal, some in the Tribal Belt, Malwa Belt, a lot in the southern part of the state as well. So across different regions of Madhya Pradesh, in 54 of the OBC-dominated seats, if the BJP is leading in 40, then this whole caste census business has not found resonance in Madhya Pradesh. And attacking, look, attacking Mr. Modi and making this uh, yeah. campaign about whether he's a panoti or not, etc., etc., plays to the BJP's strengths, quite yep. frankly. And no, the, the, it's a the classic case. Card. The more you get personal with the PM, the more the mandate shifts away from you. It does because not work. Comes. It does not work. See, Telangana in this case is that the, the biggest alternative to the BRS was the Congress party. It's an exactly. opportunity loss for the BJP. The BJP yeah. has shot itself in the foot after getting no. the kind of leg up in Hyderabad. Interestingly, yeah, yeah, three Three of the eight seats that the BJP is leading in is in Hyderabad city. So let me just take you through Gosha Mahal, Raja Singh, despite yeah. all the you know controversy, him getting the ticket, not getting the ticket, and then the MIM not putting a candidate against him. He's leading in Gosha Mahal. The neighboring constituency of Yakutpura, Virendra Babu Yadav of the BJP is leading. And then you have one more constituency, Malakpet, where Sam Reddy, Surinder Reddy of the BJP is leading. So BJP, just to say, out of the eight, uh, three are, are in Hyderabad in city. Hmm? Things are changing, changing in Chhattisgarh. Things, things are changing in Chhattisgarh and things are also changing in Rajasthan, where the, it's almost dead heat. BJP just yeah. too clear of the halfway mark or the, or the winning number of 100. Uh, Congress is at 82, it's gone up again. But the others have also increased to 15. There's a reason why these independents and others were being called late night, as Payal had told us. Quickly going to the live result, oh, to Shivani now. and Rajesh yes. Raina. Oh. How many rounds of counting already done? <laughs> Shivani, what's the update? Yeah. <coughs> So, uh, as far as the number of rounds is concerned, Anand, it differs from state to state and actually from constituency to constituency. So, for example, in Rajasthan, in some constituencies, we have as many as three rounds of votes that have been po uh, counted and are in. I have the first numbers from Telangana as well, from where the uh, vote count has started to come in. Uh, let me just read out for the KTR. For KTR from Sirsila, his constituency, first round 2,638, second round 3,547. So those are the two rounds from Sirsila. So it differs, but by and large in most constituency, we now have the second round of votes that are now coming in. I have Rajesh uh, with me. Just give me a sense. Uh, there is some states in some constituencies, particularly in Rajasthan, I saw three rounds are in. 
but yeah. not so much in others. No, in sir, in Rajasthan, third round is just going on, mm. and in other places, second round is going on. Right. Mm. Round is, second round is about to complete now. Yes. Mm. yes, the second round is about to complete for most constituencies, but in some constituencies, it has been completed. You can even see third round results. Uh, but uh, yes, as I mentioned, the Telangana vote count is now coming in. Uh, there are, of course, more and more numbers coming in. A lot of the leads now getting crystallized. But let's remember that this is still round two in most constituencies, and so maybe round, round two, three. Two rounds, two rounds, and in some states it is three rounds. So it is still many would say early days, at least five to six rounds because uh, uh, before some seats start really consolidating, eight to nine rounds before you would say that these leads are shaping up. Rajasthan again, BJP going back up to 103. The Congress slipping by one. The others uh, only getting stronger by the hour as we speak. Now BJP further going up in the rounds as three rounds have completed uh, in in BJP uh, in, in in Rajasthan for the BJP here. In Madhya Pradesh, look at that, 153. Uh, we, we call them outliers and improbables. The three of the pollsters had looked at a, a 150 plus mark for the BJP, and that seems to have happened in, in Madhya Pradesh. We don't know yet. It's not consolidating, it's consolidating, but it's not yet over. Let's quickly look at how the halfway arch looks up in front of us for Chhattisgarh, uh, and we've called this. Now, this is another element. And this is it. 46 is the winning number. At this point, the BJP is actually trailing and the Congress has passed this 46 number. The Congress... So we've got the colors wrong on these sides. So Congress is 46 and this is where it is, the Congress party. Uh, we'll just come back to this in just a bit. Quickly taking it back again into the studio. You know, uh, Zaka's got Rajasthan on the wall. You know, is there a reason why? The yes. number of others we keep talking about in Rajasthan, 15. Five of them are to this BAP party. So five is a is a substantial number of MLAs I still to have. I remember uh, our journalist, our reporter yeah. had to, uh, told me that, you know, a few months back that there's some party called BAP and they're going to float some. <laughs> oh. Do you think I should do a story? <laughs> I said, yes, why don't you talk to them, you know, because in an election, assembly, everybody is important. Yeah. I think he went there and he did So I, I think it's going to be interesting. So five from the BAP party, there's one person from the BSP. And then in this belt, the desert belt, again, there are three independents from Shio, from Barmer uh, and from Baitu. So, so earlier, the Bharatiya tribal party of Chotubai Vasawa, they had won yeah. two seats in the last election. I so think this is the derivative has, of, I won't, of that. I won't still stick my neck out in Talangana or in Chhattisgarh. Chhattisgarh mm -hmm. is a tight fight, no doubt, and we were expecting that. Which way it will go, I think it's too early. But Talangana, look, after what Shivani said, that look, only a couple of one or two rounds have been counted. I, I think we should hold our horses there a little bit. Telangana at this moment looks as if the no, margins are big. But I'm quite surprised that with the EVMs in there, why is the counting so slow? No, is it no, because they're going to match it? Yeah. No, it's only... Barely 10 o'clock. Yeah, 10 o'clock, two rounds of counting. You should have at least had three to four rounds of counting because there are 18 rounds of counting on an average to go through. So uh, that means unless we have at least eight to nine rounds or 10 rounds, a half a mark, then we, well, we can't even say. In fact, VV sometimes it could tally. go all the you way have back. We also huh? have the VV pad to tally. The VV pad to tally. So that can take the VV some pad time. tallying is, yeah. is, the, is, that, is so what is taking time. In Telangana, so 68 39 is what we are looking at. B BJP, uh, the Goshamal seat now, Raja Singh is uh, trailing to the BRS. So candidate just add up there. the numbers there. BRS, uh, 39, S 39 plus 4. If you were to look at where the BRS is getting its numbers, it's largely in this Siddhi Pet, mm. Medak, Sirsila, you know, which is the stronghold of the KCR family. Oh, yeah. That's uh, uh, where a large chunk of the, the pinks are. And of course, there is Hyderabad city. Outskirts of Hyderabad, they've got a whole bunch of seats there. But if you look at where the Congress is getting, and I think this is, this is the story of this election, this entire southern belt, there's one CPI candidate who, by the way, is allied with the Congress. So this entire southern and eastern belt, uh, they have done extremely well. And here in the north as well, in Adilabad, Asifabad, uh, where the Congress had virtually no presence. Look at this map and look at 2018. The Congress had absolutely nothing uh, in this part of Telangana. Mm. They had zero in this part of Telangana. East and South is where they had fewer seats. <laughs> east, they continue to retain East in 2023, uh, but they've really added in this part, in the northern part, and I think that's where the Congress seems to have made a big difference. And this, of course, the twin Reddy districts of uh, well, uh, Reddy. And, and, and those parts which are aligned to Tamil Nadu. To you know, the, the southern belt towards uh, southern Telangana, they were, they were not there last time around. Yeah. Congress has actually so this, made this whole Uruja. belt. Yeah. So, this it, is south it, of uh, Warangal, so the hmm. Khammam, Nalgonda, that belt. Again, Revan Reddy is from uh, this yeah. part, from Malkajgiri. So, he's the MP from there. This, this southern and eastern part 
which is uh, which is bordering Rayalaseema. That is again, again I keep going back to it. For the Congress, when YSR used to win elections, it was A the Reddy vote and it was B the Rayalaseema vote. And I think that vote seems to have come back to the Congress. Perhaps in the hope that a Reddy will become Chief Minister, I don't know. We'll now, see. Now, Chhattisgarh, it may be dead heat. 45-45 if the two others swing the BJP way. That's changed again. Yeah, and that, so 45, that's what I'm saying. 43. I'm just saying 45-43 in favour of the Congress, but the yeah, two others... Yeah, this is going to go down yeah, to the wire. Yeah, this is going to go down to the wire. Okay, yeah, vote yeah. share. Yeah. In Telangana, mm -hmm. Congress is at currently at 41.64% vote share, and the BRS is at 38.39%. So it's there still is a, quite, so it's a, quite, that's what uh, I'm saying. Let's not, yeah. let's not jump the gun on Telangana. I know the margins are looking sort of expansive as far as the Congress is concerned, but very initial rounds of counting. Just, just and the BJP is at 12%. The two, the 12, two independents who are leading, uh, one of them is from Konta, which is again Nexel affected. It's the southernmost constituency. Uh, he's from the CPI, so you would suspect you would that if he wins, he would go power. with uh, the Maybe Congress. The and Khuji, which is in the, in the central part of the state, uh, Lalita Kaur from the HRP, a regional party there in uh, Chhattisgarh. So these are the two who are not affiliated to the BJP or to the Congress. But I, I think the BJP has done two smart things here. One, in this Naxal belt. Again, I can, I can go back seat by seat. From Dantewada, the BJP candidate is leading. From Jagdalpur, the BJP candidate is leading. From Narayanpur, uh, the BJP candidate is leading. So in, in the Naxal belt, the BJP has raked up numbers in a way that we didn't see in 2018. And yes, Nalin, and, and of course, the tribal we, seats here yeah. in the north. So a quick point on vote share in, in Chhattisgarh. I think we were talking about that it's being a dead heat. The Election Commission website is currently showing Showing that on vote share, the Congress is at 43.43% in Chhattisgarh and the BJP is at 43.87%. <laughs> so there's nothing to choose it's from that. It's 0.4% and, between and, and look, BSP is at 2.59%. No, but yeah. look at from where the BJP has yeah. come. Yeah. yeah. If you look at yeah. the numbers last no, time, that. See, uh, right? what so, would you attribute this to? One, will you attribute this to the counter naxal <coughs> operations? Because the, again, Amit Shah said the same thing. Three problem areas we've really actively dealt with. Jammu and Kashmir, the Red Corridor or Red Terror uh, as an issue and the Northeast. This is again that he said on the BSF raising day, he mentioned this. Do you think that's a factor on ground or is there something else that would have uh, resulted in this swing? Because none of the pollsters have predicted this. Yes. Phase one, many thought that it was going to go back to the Congress. Nobody could predict this yeah, on who ground. Is the yeah. most, who is the most uh, prescient leader of the BJP and what was his focus? Hmm. What was Modi's focus? Hmm. It was the Mahadev app scandal, hmm. straight off. And he kept saying that this man has not even spared Mahadev. Mahadev. Ah. So that played double entendre there. Secondly, most importantly, he said that look, in this particular state, you have had diversion from the most uh, mm. underprivileged, which is the tribal and the uh, EVCs. Ah. This is what he kept saying in both all his campaigns. Correct. Ah. So I think he so, made that an issue. So now, corruption, corruption, and of I, course I the uh, really backward, uh, uh, underprivileged yes. that he that he looked at. Now, you know, we used to have this trend of anti-incumbency in Indian politics. That huh. the BJP has kind of changed to pro-incumbency in the last eight, nine, ten years. I think what we are seeing is the Congress being unable to to retain power in states where where it where it had a governance record. Yeah. So, um, so Punjab. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, also in Chhattisgarh, in every <coughs> region of Chhattisgarh, north, central, south, urban, rural. If you look at the Dandagrane region or the Pathalgadi region, BJP is ahead in every single region so, at the moment. So, so this is a telling statement on the Congress's governance? That, that's one point that you're uh, very strongly making, uh, especially when they had big states that they should have actually held on to when they were trying, saying that they are actually coming back and they're making gains after the Karnataka win. The second part is, has the BJP realized that they cannot compromise on Sangathan Shakti? They have to ensure that everybody, the might and muscle, you can't take any election lightly and the central leadership cannot be hands-off and leave it only to the state uh, parties or the state leaders to do it. That's also a problem area for the BJP because their state leadership doesn't seem to be very robust enough to do something on their own. Whereas the Congress is largely the regional satraps <coughs> within the Congress who have done this election. Ashok so, Gehloth on his own I, in Rajasthan. I, I do have a question though, yeah, on, yeah, yeah. on Jatisgarh. If, if the numbers crystallize, let's say 45, 46 to the Congress and it's slightly yeah. maybe one mm -hmm. or two seats ahead of the BJP, uh, will Bagel continue to be Chief Minister or will Dio's faction now come out and say that, look, he here was a man, he was saying, you know, we'll that get 60 seats. That depends on where they've won. If they haven't won in the tribal areas, then Bagheel as the OBC yes. uh, person will still have a say in, you know, in pushing his mm. case forward. And who are yeah. the two others? 
So one of them, like I said, is a CPI uh, candidate from Konta. So I suspect that will go with the likelier to go with the Congress. And one person is Lalita Karwar from the HRP party in a seat called Khuji. In any case, we don't know what. So just the Sarkar, just ki hogi, usi ke saath jayenge. The Congress won't want to risk upsetting equations there. So they'll probably yeah. go with continuity. So I've just been told HRP is called Hamar Raj Party. It'll be interesting to see, you know, which way they are likely to swing. Yeah. Whether towards. But BJP you may generally you will swing towards the victor one seat that of makes course. them comfortable. But the fact is that multiple rounds of counting. I'm. Then what? 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 I'